And we're back. I'm Nick, and today we're looking at alerts. Alerts are the easiest, fastest way to present a pop-up to your users uh, that basically just says something. So an alert pops up right in the center of the screen and it has a message and then one or two buttons. So usually it's something like a pop-up that says there's an error and the user can click OK, or would you like to save this image and then user can click uh, save or cancel. So the alert is usually something that's pretty basic in your app, but it's the easiest way to just pop it up right in front of your user so that they have to read the message and they have to click either like yes or no. Now a single alert by itself is fairly easy to implement. It's a lot like some of the other modifiers like sheets that we've already covered in this course. However, there are a lot of times in apps where you're gonna to wanna to customize your alert for a bunch of different situations. So if you had like an error versus success, you might wanna change out what the alert message says. You might also wanna change out what buttons are the user can actually click in the alert. So I'll first show you guys how to implement the basic alert. Then we're gonna get a little more advanced and we're gonna run through a bunch of different ways on how we can present dynamic or different alerts within the same view. Welcome back everyone. I am back in our Xcode project again. As we always do, let's right click the navigator, create a new file for this video. It's going to be a Swift UI view and we're going to talk about alerts. So let's call it alert bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. And once you're inside, click resume on the canvas and get ready to get coding. So I'm going to try to make this video a little shorter because the last one was super long, uh, but let's start by adding a button to our view here. And when we open the parentheses, let's use the string protocol completion. So the title of our button, let's just say click, click here. And for the action, let's press enter and leave it blank for a second. Now to show an alert is actually quite simple. We just call dot alert and we can call it anywhere within our body. And we can use the is presented completion. Now this is presented is probably familiar to you. This is the same as when we call dot sheet, which we did a couple videos ago. We call dot sheet is presented and to present it, we needed a Boolean. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So to present this alert, we need a Boolean that we can toggle. So at the top, outside the body, let's add at state var show alert of type bool equals false. Let's bind it to the is presented with the money sign show alert. And then for the content, we need to add an alert. If we hold the option button and click on alert, we'll see that the content needs to be a function that returns an alert. So in this content, we're just going to add an alert. Type in alert, open the parentheses, and we have a bunch of different completions here. Let's start out with just presenting the title. So let's click the title completion and we will add a text as it's telling us. So text, and in the text we'll add maybe, uh, there was an error. Now we want to present this alert when we click the button. So inside the button action, we'll call show alert dot toggle. Now in our preview, we can click on our button that says click here and we're going to see our first alert. And the alert has a title saying there was an error and we have this default button saying, okay. So this right here is what an alert is. It's the default iOS pop-up that you've probably seen a bunch of times on your apps. And we have the ability to customize what we want the alert to actually say. And we can also customize what buttons we want to put in here. So the default alert with just a title gives us this just a title and the OK button. But we can present other alerts as well. So instead of this alert, let's comment it out and let's add another one. We'll do alert, open the parentheses, and this time let's use title message primary button and the secondary button completion. So press enter on that. And then to make this a little more readable, I'm going to put each of these on their own line. So press enter before title, enter before text, enter before primary button and enter before secondary button. So now we can really customize this alert. So let's first add a text here. We'll add text. Uh, this is the title. For the message it is an optional text. So if we don't want a message, we can leave this as nil. But if we do want a message, we can add text. And we can say, here we will describe the error. 
And then we can decide what buttons we want to put into our alert. And if we press the period button on one of these, we have a whole bunch of different options here. We have cancel buttons, we have default buttons, and then there are destructive buttons. And basically all you need to know is that the destructive buttons are going to be red and the default buttons will be blue and the, and the cancel buttons will be like default cancel buttons. For now, let's just click the destructive with a label and text. And for the label of text, we'll put text, uh, maybe delete. I don't know what this error is, but this is just an example. And then for the secondary button, let's just do dot and we'll use the default cancel button. So now let's preview this, let's click here, and we can see we have the title for the error, we have the description, the message for the error, and we have our custom buttons. So we have a destructive delete button, that's why it's red, and we have the default cancel button. So we can not only customize these buttons, but we can also customize what we want the buttons to do. So for this destructive, instead of using this completion, let's press, let's delete it, press the period again, and let's find the destructive that also has an action at the end of it. So there's a label and an action. And here we can add text, which we can say delete again. And we have an action. We can press enter on the action. And in this little action snippet, it works just like a button. So when they click delete, whatever we want to happen will happen here. Now we don't actually have anything to change when we click this button. So let's just add a background to our view here. So let's put this button into a Z stack. And before the button, let's add a background layer. So we'll do color.yellow, dot edges ignoring safe area all. And I'm just gonna change the color of this background. So let's create a variable. We'll do at state var background color of type color equals color.yellow. And we'll take this background color, put it into as the background color here. And when we click on the delete button, let's just change the background color to red. So we'll do background color equals dot red. Of course, we're just doing this to prove that when we click this button, we can execute some code. So let's resume the canvas one more time. Let's click on our button. We have this is the title, we have the message, we have our cancel button which by default doesn't do anything, it just hides the alert. And of course we have our delete button. And when we click on the delete button, we now have a custom action, which is just gonna change the background color to red. So I click on the delete and you can see that it does work. So this is the basics on how to present an alert. And if you have been following this course, if you know me, you know that I love to keep the body as nice and neat and clean as possible. And this is kind of starting to look messy to me. So what we're gonna do is actually take this alert function and extract it from the body. So let's do that. So outside the body down here, I'm gonna create a func and it's gonna be called get alert. Open and close the parentheses and this function needs to return an alert. So we're gonna add an arrow, so dash with a greater than sign. And this basically means return and then we're gonna add alert and then open the brackets. So this function is going to return an alert. In here, we'll add return, and then we need to add an alert. So I'm going to just cut this alert here, paste it in here, and in our function, we will just call get alert, and it's gonna return an alert, everything will build correctly. And again, now you can just see how nice and neat the body is, and we still get an alert here. So we'll click resume, Make sure it still works, click here. Button still works, of course. And before we end this video, I wanna show you guys a couple ways where we can customize uh, these alerts. Because sometimes you want to have this text to be a little dynamic. You don't want it to always say the exact same title or the exact same description, or you might have different alerts on the same view. So let's start customizing it. And I'm gonna take you through a couple steps, a couple different ways that you can do it. So the first way is going to be for situations when you have a title and a message and you just have the default buttons. So we don't have a primary and secondary button. So what I'm going to do is create two more variables at the top of the screen. We'll do at state var. We will do uh, alert title of type string equals and I'll just set it to a blank string for now. 
and we'll do at state var alert message of type string and we'll set it equal to a blank message for now and in our alert I'll zoom out here so this stays on one screen in our alert Instead of this whole section here, I'm going to highlight this, hold the command and press the backslash button to comment this out. And I'm going to instead return an alert. And we're just going to use the title message dismiss button. The title is going to be a text. And in this text, we will add alert title. I'll put this on its own line. The message, same thing, we'll add a text and it will be alert message and the dismiss button, we're just gonna use the dot default with a label and the text will just say okay. So now when we call get alert, whenever we show the alert, it's going to present an alert with whatever the title and whatever the message are at that time. So we can actually just change the title and message before presenting the alert to change the alert. So I'm gonna put this button into a V stack Let's actually just cut this alert, put it at the bottom of the Z of the V stack here. And I'm going to copy this button and paste another one. So now we have two buttons on our screen. And let's change the title of them. So button one and button two. And now before we show the alert each time, let's just change the title and message. So in this first one, let's call alert title. And we'll set it equal to error uploading video. And we'll add an alert message. And we'll say the video, the video could not be uploaded. And for button two, we'll do the same thing. We'll call alert title. And we'll set it equal to successfully uploaded video. And in these alerts, I actually really like to add emojis. So if we hold the control command and spacebar button, we can get the emojis that are default in Xcode and we can add emojis into our alerts, which is pretty cool. So double click on one cause this was a success and we'll also change the alert message and we'll set it equal to your video is now public. I don't really know what these messages are, but I just want to show you guys that we can use this method to change the alert dynamically. So when I resume and I click on button one, I can see error uploading video could not video could not be uploaded. And if I click on button two, successfully uploaded video, your video is now public. So we can just use this very simply to change the alert. And we have that same static get alert function down here. But one thing I want to note is that if you use this method, be sure to be updating the alert and the message each time. Because if we clicked on button one and we updated the alert, the title and the message, and then for button two, we forget to update the message, we're still going to have that message from up from number one. So if you're using this method, just make sure to always update both variables. Now I said this video wasn't going to be long, but I want to show you one more super important way where we can customize our alerts and that's using an enum. And this is probably the most common way to actually do this in a real app. So for this method, we're going to create a custom enum and we've done this in a previous video. So here we'll do enum, uh, my alerts, open the brackets, and then we need to add in this enum, all of the possible alerts. We'll do case, uh, the first one will be success and then case uh, error and you can add a whole bunch more cases if there's different errors on your screen or whatever but we're just going to leave this as success and error for now and now instead of having an alert title and message we're just going to have one state variable that's going to handle which alert we want to show so we'll do at state var alert type of type and it will be my alerts and we'll add a question mark to make it optional and we'll set it equal to nil to start. So this is the type is going to always be nil or one of these. And then we don't need the title anymore. We don't need the message anymore. And down in our code, instead of changing the title and changing the message, we will just change the type. We'll, we'll call alert type and button one, we'll set it equal to error. 
And for button two, we will comment it out and we will set the alert type equal to success. And then in our get alert function, instead of calling this, we will then add a switch statement. So we'll say switch. And the value we're going to switch on is alert type. And that's this variable at the top here. So alert type is always going to be success, error, or nil. And when we switch, we need to handle all of those situations. So first we'll do case.error. And if it's an error, what do we want to return? Well, then we can customize the alert here. So we can return an alert and we can use whatever we want just for the error message. So let's just do the title completion here and we'll say text, uh, there was an error. Then we'll do the other case dot success and we'll add the colon here. And if it's success, we'll return an alert and we'll say, uh, maybe we'll use the title message and dismiss button. So the title will be text and we'll say, this was a success. The message, let's keep nil because we don't need it. And the dismiss button, let's make dot default. And let's give it an action because we already have that built in. So let's use the action method. And in the text here, we'll say text, uh, okay. And for the action, we'll press enter. And we'll just change the background color to dot green. And then we need a default. And this is going to happen in a case that we forget to actually set the alert type. So again, we set the alert type as nil at the very beginning. And then before we actually present an alert, we set the alert type to error, or we set the alert type to success. But in a situation, if we forget to set the alert type, we need to handle that. And here we're just going to return a alert and we're going to have it say text uh, error. And this again should never happen because we know we're going to set the alert type beforehand. So let's test this out now. And when we click our button one, it's going to set the alert type to error and then call show alert. And when we toggle show alert, it's going to call this function get alert. And then get alert is going to switch on the alert type. So whatever the alert type is currently, if it's error, it's going to show us this error. So button one, there was an error. Okay. Button two, this was a success. Okay. And when we click button two, it turns green. That's because we have totally different alerts for our success and for our error. So that's it for this video. I wanted to show you guys how to present an alert and how to make it dynamic so you can really customize the alerts on your screen. Uh, this enum method is probably the most common because you can really customize what alert you want to show. But you do know other ways where we can do the alert message and title or we can just add an alert directly. Of course, there are ways to add your own custom pop-ups. So if you don't like the default formatting, you can do that. Uh, but for beginners and for when you're building MVPs or just starting out, I would say alerts are super common because it's super simple and super easy to just add a quick alert. And it's very useful, especially for handling errors uh, or success messages that you want the user to actually see. So now you're an alert expert. Hope you enjoyed this video. And in the next video, I'm going to cover action sheets and action sheets are just like alerts except they pop up at the bottom of your screen and you can add a whole bunch more buttons. So if you have a situation where this alert isn't enough with the two buttons, we can then use an action sheet and we can show four, five, ten buttons. So I hope you guys are excited. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and I'll see you guys in the next video.